For a, for a whole long year since the last uh, conference, I haven't really been thinking about the film industry that much. I've been dealing with other issues as a, as a, as a researcher and a social scientist. And therefore, I have this kind of effect of immediate comparison. You know, what was the situation last year and what, what does it seem to be now? And I have to say, the, the general feeling is much more positive. There was, there was a whole lot more of tensions here last year. And now everybody is so kind of happy and discussing their future opportunities uh, uh, yeah, with, 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 with quite a lot of positive um, outlook. But at the same time, is it really so? I mean, um, I mean, in, especially in the last panel, it was often asked that, you know, what, what do you think of when you think of Europe, yeah? Is, is Europe doing good? Yes. In the context of film industry, it seems that film is doing actually pretty good. You I mean? Um, but at the same time, Europe itself is probably not doing very well right now. And, um, and so I need to kind of, I need to start out by I was apologizing, but actually I'm really quite thick today <laughs> when, uh, when doing my analysis because I didn't sleep that much uh, last night because I had a deadline this morning. I was writing an essay about uh, what is the most uh, hottest topic these days for the general society, defining the post-truth society for the... I wrote an essay about that. And, um, and your you know, general understanding is that you know, our democracies are not doing that well. And in now, in, in the context of this conference, the first thing I remembered here was that when basically everybody was tapping each other's shoulders that we are doing economically pretty well, then, um, then I organized another conference together with the Council of Europe uh, a month ago here in Tallinn. And, um, and we had the pleasure to uh, host um, one of the leading uh, film industry and creative industry scholars in, in Europe, Philip Slezinger from Glasgow University. And what the, what he was saying that, that maybe the whole EU media and cultural policy focus has been too long on, um, on economic aspects only. So we, when we talk about cultural industries, we talk about how we should do economically well and we need to try to find all these new models, but we have broadly forgot about the, the kind of enlightening aspect, the democracy aspect. Does the culture serve well enough to, to make our democracies uh, work better. And as we see that they don't work well enough, though maybe we haven't, we haven't done something too well, yeah? And um, so, and especially in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the panel that was discussing that the diversity and the mass delivery and all that, um, the, the more broad media situation was also discussed and, and yes, film industry is doing good, but media itself, the journalism, probably uh, not. I mean, especially here in Estonia, I've been looking at the numbers often in terms of advertising income for newspapers and, you know, these are going down. And, uh, and, and the results of this probably is exactly the, the post-truth society, that truth Fact-based fact media content is not being produced that much um, anymore, and it probably also doesn't reach us very well, because there, there are all sorts of intermediaries in between that don't deliver that kind of factual content well enough to us. And, um, and uh, therefore, um, perhaps we... Also, when we're thinking about audiovisual industries, we start, when we, when we talk about diversity, we, we don't need to think about only that is content from different member states reaching to the sort of broader arena, but also the diversity in terms of quality of the, of the content. Is, is it truthful? Does it deliver better understanding of what's going on to our, to our citizens? And, um, and I don't know the answer, but there may be a problem. Um, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going through my notes. <sighs> yes, so uh, perhaps there, there have been, as, as a researcher, I travel across Europe quite a lot and I hear about the policy initiatives here and there. And therefore, you know, there was a recent 
example of, of a Danish initiative where they, um, where they do have a media innovation fund. But it's not only about uh, uh, um, facilitating the emergence of startups uh, just in terms of monetizing the, and being economically successful, but the important criteria is also simply the, the democratic value. What, what do they uh, add in terms of plurality of worldviews into the play in the, in the broader European and, and, and different national media spaces? Um, yes, but at the same time, of course, what was in the same panel was discussed, discussed the sort of mass delivery and, the, and, the, and how well the linear media is being doing. But this, and, and the point is that in addition to, uh, we need to emphasize that as well, or, or put, make, make sure that the, that the classical television or, or mass media is doing well, because it is especially about the sort of national conversation, that we all share certain topics, that, that we, un, that as whole societies understand what is, what is at stake, that this, this part of the media system should uh, work well. And therefore, are we making sure that our public service media uh, especially in the Eastern European, European countries, is working well. Um, I think there are there are problems there. But what, what I found especially interesting in that same panel about the diversity in mass delivery is, is this potential focus on local and especially hyperlocal content, um, because hyperlocal means also getting really close to people, being relevant about their lives, etc. And therefore, sort of, are, are we also on the European level making an effort to support these kinds of really local uh, initiatives? Should it be also only the matter of, uh, of the nation states to, to deal with these kinds of issues? Um, yes, but at the same time, of course, digital single market is <laughs> and continues to be important because this kind of truthful very local content needs to travel well. And if it doesn't, there's a problem. Because then we, it needs to travel faster than all the lies these days do. I went last, yesterday, when I was writing that essay that I mentioned, there, was a, there are very good databases already developed by different media watch institutions in terms of what kind of lies are traveling and how all this is happening. And it's really astonishing. So this needs to be forced better and, and perhaps when we bring in the sort of the democracy argument into the, into the discussion about the digital single market, maybe we have uh, better arguments for it as a whole. Yes. And then again, when we designed the digital single market, uh, what was discussed in the first panel, that, and also in the last panel, um, that you know, we, we still don't know enough how our uh, content is being used, by whom, etc., etc. And it was very good to hear that the European Commission is already working on these issues more systematically than perhaps before. Uh, really hopeful about that, because uh, um, you cannot work towards the so-called potential neo-truthful society without these, these things, these algorithmic algorithms being as transparent as possible. We, you, if you, if you, these things are untransparent, these are very good, this, 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 this mechanism is very good for the sort of re, reproducing that kind of this post-truth situation that we are going through right now. And, um, and so, as everybody was emphasizing, big data is a solution, but the last thing to say is that Big data needs to be used um, responsibly in the sense that um, if, we, if it again starts to be used for, oh, we know our audience is better and so we personalize better and develop very good offers, then this again probably produces more and more of various kinds of echo chambers, various kinds of filter bubbles, and then we're again in trouble. So I did a little bit slightly different thing here as a final talk. But perhaps this is probably in the minds of many people and we need to start connecting these issues. So it's not only about how well we're doing as an industry in terms of financial incomes, but in terms of what our, our broader effect to the, to the rest of the society and culture. So thank you very much. <laughs>